how am I sure about my election, about choosing what God prepared for me, eternal life? How am I sure that my election and my calling, I made it sure? In Matthew 24, verses 37 and 38, Lord Jesus said, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And Jesus gives a couple of things and says, In those days before the flood, they were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Now, is it a problem with eating or with drinking or, or married, marrying? No, that's not a problem. The problem is that those days people were eating just to gratify their appetite, drinking, partying, marrying, sometimes not even, you know, marrying legally just living together, separating, and all these things perverted. And these things are repeated these days. People are looking just for their pleasures. Now, the servant of the Lord, Ellen G. White, says, who will show me how to make my calling and election sure? One of the signs of the last days is that professed Christians are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Now, here gives more clear attention to people that it says are professed, professed Christians, lovers of pleasure, whatever, eating, drinking, partying, getting in marriage, uh, forgetting their spouse and getting with someone else, ignoring their vows. And he says, professed Christians are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. How can I make my election sure? Let us see what it says in the book in Heavenly Places, page 29. It says, no one needs to lose eternal life. Everyone who chooses daily to learn of the Heavenly Teacher will make it calling and election sure. This is the way that we can make our calling and election for heaven sure. Learning da daily from the Heavenly Teacher. Now, what do we have to learn from Lord Jesus Christ as our heavenly teacher? He said in Matthew 11, 28 and 29, Come unto me and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. We need to learn to be meek. We need to be lowly in heart like Lord Jesus Christ. We have lessons to learn. Now, where can we learn? Obviously, we can learn of the heavenly teacher every day from the scriptures. Because we believe that in the scriptures we have eternal life, but they testify of the heavenly teacher. And looking daily to our heavenly teacher, we may make our election and calling for heaven sure. Now, if we, may, if we learn daily, I want to emphasize this paragraph from heavenly places. Daily learning from our heavenly teacher, we make our election and calling sure. Why is it so important that these days we make our election and calling sure? What time do we live these days? What is the time that we as Advent believers, we know that is happening these days? Why is such an emergency to make our election sure, our calling sure? For many people, the end of the world is coming. Many of them, they are dying. And that's the end of the world for them. For the rest, for the entire world, soon will come. We know that. And we know when we are reading in Revelation 7, verses 1 through 4, that God is looking for people that are making their calling and election sure. It says that after these things, John in Revelation, it says, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And they saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom we it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servant of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And they were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now, brothers and sisters, 
we have here clearly saying to hurt not the earth or the sea or the trees until the servants of the Lord are sealed. We see that the time is fulfilling. We see that the angels are, are, are loosening the, the, the winds. We can see that the sealing time is about to end. Did we make our election sure and our calling sure? This time is short. Actually, in um, early writings, Ellen G. White wrote in 1882 saying, the sealing time is very short and will soon be over. Now is the time while the four angels are holding the four winds to make our calling and election sure. Now, since 1882, we basically have more than 130 something years. And he says that this time is short. Soon is about to end. If it's not ending, God knows. And every case, each one of us, we may receive the seal of the Heavenly Father on our foreheads. What does it mean to receive the seal of God? Still the spirit of prophecy answers us. Uh, Bible Commentaries, Volume 4, page 1161, it says, Just as soon as the people of God are sealed in their foreheads, it is not any seal or mark that can be seen, but a settling into the truth, both intellectually and spiritually, so they cannot be moved just as soon as God's people are sealed and prepared for the shaking, it will come. So the seal of God is not something that is visible. It's not a mark that is seen, but it is settling into the truth. We need to ask ourselves, I, am I settled into the truth? Intellectually, do I know the truth? And spiritually, am I in the right spirit into the truth of God, Lord Jesus Christ, that I cannot be moved by anything that comes in this world. Just as soon as God's people are sealed and prepared, the shaking will come. And look what it says next paragraph. Indeed, it has begun already, the shaking. The judgments of God are now upon the land to give us warning that we may know what is coming. The judgments of God are coming upon this earth because of our sins, of this world's sin. Now, am I settled into the truth? This is the real question that we all need to ask for ourselves. Am I settled into the truth intellectually and spiritually? Is this, is this sure? Am I sure about what I believe intellectually and spiritually? It's just a possibility, you know. I may know some things, I, I need to learn more things, or it's just a probability, or it's sure. You need to ask for yourself, am I settled into the truth? Is it a probability? It's a possibility. Do I know? Do I need to know more? This is the time to be settled into the truth. In the Bible Echo, January 25, 1897, Ellen G. Y. wrote, I beseech you, do not risk your hope of heaven on a possibility or a probability. You have now an opportunity to make your calling and election sure. Now is the time, not possible, not that I know a little bit, uh, I, I am settled a little bit, or it's probably, you know, pro it is to not risk with possibly or probably it is to be settled into the truth if not risking it says we are all exhorted to be diligent to make our old calling and election sure but she wrote further on but i am greatly troubled fearing yes and knowing that there are many who profess the truth who are not testing their lives and characters by God's great moral standard of righteousness. So, in other words, she says that there are many people that profess the truth, but they are not testing their lives according with God's great moral standard, which is His law of righteousness. And many times, 
many people that profess the truth, they are careless. They have not the oil. They have not the oil of grace in their vessels with their lungs. Actually, the Bible tells us not only testing, but to examine ourselves. Each one of us, we need to examine whether we are in faith, settle into the truth. And he says, prove your own selves. And many people, you know, instead of, think of, of testing their own lives, instead of testing my own life, many times I might be tempted, you might be tempted to, te to test another life. In Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 710, he says, he talks about a certain person, a lady, and he says, the great work before her is to be diligent in making her calling and election sure, to cease watching others, and now begin the work to be very jealous of herself, if she is right with God. And now, since this is a general advice, I got the courage to put, uh, the male version as well, and it says to make his calling and election sure, to be very jealous for himself, not watching others. This is the advice from the spirit of prophecy. Now, what can I do for others then? Should I be careless? In my character and personality, volume two, it says, cultivate the kind and conciliatory spirit and let not feeling of retaliation come into your mind, into your minds and hearts. We have but a little time in this world, and let us work for time and for eternity. Be diligent to make your calling and election sure. Brothers, this is, this is something also very important. Making our election and calling sure, it is to cultivate as well a kind spirit, a conciliatory spirit, and the Bible goes even more and it says, if it be possible, Romans 12, 16, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. This is another thing that we make our election and calling sure. As much, in other words, as much as depends on you. Some people never want to reconcile with you. But it says, as much as life in you, in us we should live peaceably with all men. That's the advice from the Bible. Now, does that mean that we, we leave people in peace and we, we unwarn them of the danger that is coming on this world? No, the Bible never tells us. Look what he says in Jude 1, 22 and 23. And he says, and some of some have compassion, making a difference. Sometimes we need to, to treat others with compassion. We don't know what they are passing through, what their problems are. But it says on the other side, verse 23, and of others, save with fear, pulling them out of fire, out of the fire, having, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. If someone, supposedly we are living in a shared accommodation and the house is taken on fire, and I'm not going to disturb my neighbor that's downstairs because I'm not disturbing him. So, you know, I'm not disturbing the house on fire. Or am I going to, to save with fear, pulling them out of fire? We have lessons to learn. To reconcile, to be kind, and to have compassion and to help one another these days. Now, why is it so important that each one of us we make our calling and election sure? Um, we still have work to do, even though we are more um, into our homes, we are in quarantine, which by the way is a biblical principle. The Bible tells us when someone has a disease or they have to be isolated, but we still have work to do a spiritual work. Even Lord Jesus in John 9, 4 and 5, he says, I must work the works of, whom, of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Now we can be thankful we have technology, we can talk with each other, we can encourage each other, and we can call others and work because the night is coming and none of us can work. 
And Lord Jesus continues and says, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Probably this is a question that we should all reflect on. Am I the light of the world? Our little, our neighborhood, or our virtual neighborhood these days, am I sharing the light that the Lord gave me? We must work. We need to wake up. You know, sometimes people used to take naps during the day. But look what he says. We need to wake up to not sleep during this day that we have. Wake up. Wake up, he says, you have a work to do, each one of us, and your son is fast hastening to its setting. Your powers are becoming enfeebled, but all there is of you, every particle of your ability belongs to God and should be used, should be used earnestly and disinterestedly in his service. Work. Work while the sun still lingers in the heavens, for the night cometh when no man can work. This is the message for each one of us, that we may work in his service, that others might be saved these days. Now, God uh, prepared great things for those that obey him, for those that are faithful. Probably the greatest destiny that every man and woman can ever dream. And that's the destiny of eternal life. He promised us that. And in Romans 8.30 says, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Now, some people may stumble over this verse and it says, Oh, look, God predestinated. Yes, he predestinated everyone to eternal life. That's a beautiful gift. But of this beautiful destiny, he called everyone. And whom he called, he them also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. But those that are predestinated for eternal life is as they are called. And the Bible tells us that they need to make their calling sure. In other words, to receive this calling. I like the explanation that uh, Elleth Wagoner in his book, uh, Wagoner on Romans, page 150 wrote. And he says, this is a complete action, referring to the verse that we just read predestinated, called, justified, and glorified. This is a completed action. We need not stumble over it if we will but remember that everything is in Christ. In Christ, we have, blessed, we have already been blessed with all spiritual blessings. All men, now look at this part, all men to that which God has prepared for them, but none are the called according to his purpose unless they have made their calling and election sure by submitting to his will. Such ones are predestinated to be saved. Nothing in the universe can hinder the salvation of any soul that accepts the trusts and trusts the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's keep in mind that everyone is called according to his purpose, but they are called if they make their calling an election sure, submitting to his will. Such ones are predestinated to be saved. Nothing in the universe can, can take them from the hand of Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus himself in John 10, 28, he says, I give unto them eternal life and no man can pluck them out of my hand. That's such a blessed promise. We cannot lose salvation if we choose this uh, life insurance policy that comes from the Lord to receive His purpose for us, His calling. He, he gave us the greatest destiny that every man can have, and no man can take us from the hand of Lord Jesus. We should be there. We should go there. James White also in his book, Health, 
or how to live, page 10, he says, commenting that verse that we read in the beginning, Peter, Apostle Peter, does not teach that all men are elected to salvation or destruction and that their faith in, is unalterably fixed before they are born and leave them in Satan's easy chair. But he exhorts his brethren to diligence to make their calling and election sure. In other words, Apostle Peter, inspired by the Lord, does not teach that when a person is born or even before born, their destiny was decided. No. The Lord wants to give the same destiny, eternal life to everyone, but he says, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. And this is the best life insurance policy, if we can call it that way. In the youth instructor, December 7, 1893, it says, today, make your calling and election sure. Peter gives a copy of the best life insurance policy in the world. He says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you according to his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. This is a copy of the best life insurance policy in the world. God is calling us to salvation. Today, we need to make our calling and election sure, because we receive everything for this. It says, give diligence. If we make our calling and election sure, it says, you shall never fall if you do these things. Now, I'm sure that many of us, we know the husband of this lady that is here, Katharina von Bora. I don't know how many people have heard about this uh, beautiful lady for the Lord and a faithful lady. She was the wife of Martin Luther. I don't know how many people uh, heard about Katharina von Bora. She was a faithful lady. And she, she was the woman behind that great reformer and great man of faith for the Lord. Um, and um, she was helping him a lot in, in his reformatory actions. And one of her sayings, it's so beautiful, it says, I want to choose Jesus. I want to be always with Jesus. And she says, so beautiful, I will stick to Christ as a burr to cloth. Look what beautiful words she says. I mean, I'm sure each one of us, when we're work, walking outside in nature and we got some burrs on our clothes, on our trousers, on our skirts, you know, and we're trying to shake them off, but they are stuck on our clothes. And she says, I will stick to Christ as a burr to cloth. Are we sticking to Christ as a burr or a thistle to cloth? This is a beautiful thought from this faithful lady, Katharina von Bora. I will stick to Christ as a burr to clothe, to stick to make our calling and election sure. Um, think about the pioneers. Think about uh, the Advent pioneers. They, they were waiting for our Lord Jesus to come those days in 1844. Now we see the signs coming more and more. Uh, they in Europe, it's a lot of this virus going on. Here also, actually, this country, they, they have already the, the top, you know, the, the deaths, you know, how many people are dying recorded from this virus, sadly. Um, but uh, there is something that tells us that is not only this, we see also the other things that were happening nowadays here recently three weeks ago there was a huge tornado that came over the city and we can be thankful none of the brethren that live in the city they all live on the outskirts of the city none of them got affected there are tornadoes that are happening all across the country specifically florida uh, last year by the end of last year there was there were those great fires in australia we see the signs that lord jesus is coming we see that he is soon coming. I was looking to see how the pioneers were thinking about his coming. And they passed through the, that great disappointment. 
and uh, a few weeks later they were still carrying on their work and Joshua Hives they were not having internet those days like we have or phones and Joshua Himes, he wrote to William Miller and he was asking probably for some counsel and he received a letter that later on he published in the Advent Herald and Signs of the Times in December 11, 1844. So what ju just approximately two months after that great disappointment and he published the, ret the letter that he received from William Miller. He says, letter from Brother Miller, November 18. So was, that was like one month almost after the great disappointment in 1844. And look what Brother Miller have said at that day. He says, we have done our work in warning sinners. This is a question if we have done our work in our times. We have done our work in warning sinners, he says, and in trying to awake a formal church. God in his providence has shut the door of the holy place, moving to the most holy place. And now, he says, we can only stir one another up to be patient and be diligent to make our calling and election sure. We are now living in the time specified by Malachi 3.18, also Daniel 12, 10, and Revelation 22, verses 10 through 12. He says, we have done our work in warning sinners. And now we are to be patient, to stir one another, to be patient and be diligent to make our calling and election sure. And if, he, if they said at that time, 1844, we are now living at the specified time by Malachi, Daniel, and Revelation. I think these verse, uh, verses are, are very important that we may see what the Bible says there and what the pioneers were inspired. Look what it says in Malachi 3.18. It says, Then ye shall return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. This is the time that the pioneers have said that we are living in this time. Soon, in Daniel 12, 10, he says, Many will be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And finally, the last verse, as it says in Revelation, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Now after the uh, pioneers have done their work and warning, they say they were just to wait because they are living in this time when God will say, him that is just, let him be unjust. He that is unjust, let him be unjust. This is the time that we are living. If we are making our election, sure or not. He says, next verse, Revelation 22, 12, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Jesus is coming soon. These are great news for us. We are waiting, but we definitely need to make our calling and election sure. To think, what are we choosing from this world? Are we choosing a career? Are we choosing a house? Are we choosing a car? Some devices? Some pleasures of this world? Or like that man that we are talking in the beginning, he had all the choices that he could take, and in such a confusion and a hurry, he got one sock. Or do we choose like that faithful lady, the wife of Martin Luther, Katharina von Bora, says, I will stick to Christ as a burr to cloth. Because the insurance, this life insurance, the best one, it was paid. Jesus paid the price. He says, we are bought with a price. We are not bought with corruptible things, 
but it says we are bought with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. This is a time, brothers and sisters, when we need to make our calling and election sure. This is the time when we should choose more Christ than anything else. Christ, in the Watchman, September 22nd, 1908, paragraph 90 says, Christ has bought you and you cannot afford to be lost. You cannot afford to be lost. Make your calling and election sure. And I would end with this sentence from the Watchman again. May you, in divine strength, make your calling and election sure. And may the Lord bless your choice. And then we will all be saved. And then we will be all together, not anymore separated. I pray that the Lord will bless you and your family. That we will all get the best life insurance policy to make our calling and election sure. Because we have the promise that if we do these things, we shall never fall. Amen.